The brief was actually quite simple. Take two tired 1980s buildings and transform them into a befitting gateway to the new Broadgate campus. The big engineering challenges, to do all of that work while keeping the access from the station for millions of commuters open. When it comes to infrastructure, this project has it all. Not only network rail, but LUL, with the central line tunnels running underneath the building. We have a bus station. And all of these things required us to draw upon all of our expertise and experience in working with third parties to gain approval. We led on the technical aspects, the geotechnical, the ground movement assessments, the impact assessments, British Land as the client choreographing all of this in the background, and Sir Robert McAlpine's doing an incredible job working through all of those complex logistics. And to add 40% additional floor area without the need for strengthening any of the foundations which were locked away underneath the network rail demise beneath us here. What was the answer? Well, the answer was forensic engineering and a lot of hard work from the entire team. It was a real collaboration. By poring over the thousands of documents, drawings and existing site photos taken from the archives in 2014, we could quickly see the potential. With the right approach, we were confident that significant additional floor area could be added by cantilevering outwards, adding stories on top, deepening the basement and even adding space in between the existing trusses which span across the bus station. Adding so much additional floor area meant that the vertical circulation would need to be overhauled. More lifts, more stairs, more risers. We investigated many different options, with our target being to retain as much of the frame as possible. But the original core, beam and column arrangement made this a difficult task. The new atrium required a little more deconstruction, but it was a crucial move to bring in extra daylight to what was otherwise a deep and dark floor plate. We had to devise novel connection and strengthening typologies to deal with the challenges of connecting new structure to existing. We used steel plates welded to column flanges for buckling. Concrete encasements were adopted where the load exceeded the steel capacity. Perhaps the most impressive feat of all was lowering the Richard Serra fulcrum sculpture. All 270 tonnes of it by over a metre. This created level access from the station to the Broadgate Circle. So getting more out of what is already there. It's easily said, but it's harder to do. But this building is British Land's first net zero building, stands testament to the fact that it was worth all of that hard work. In working to extend an existing frame like this, the design tasks are multiplied. You've got to look at the existing, you've got to look at the infill structure, and then design new structure. And within that new structure, we can achieve amazing things like the terrace spaces that we see here with views out across London. When we look back almost 10 years ago, so when we started this journey, projects that took existing buildings like this and tried to reinvent them and reinvigorate them at this scale were few and far between. But I think the fact that we've achieved that here is really a clear indication of how good the team was and how much of a team effort it, it needs to drive these things through. And looking ahead, it's quite exciting to think what can be achieved 10 years from now with the projects that are on the drawing board currently.